and it reads, Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered, Mar the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice, and it will not be taken away from her. Thank you. And you may be seated. And I'm, I'm an older sister of two, one by one minute, the other by 10 years. Right. And um, yeah, you know, yeah, men, uh, boys, <laughs> you know, they mature a little bit slower. Well, in my family and my brother, <laughs> he matures a little, he matured a little bit slower than me and my twins. Uh, I, I consider myself a twin, but I'm really a triplet. But me and my sister always felt we were older than him because he was just, you know, maybe a few years behind us emotionally. And um, so I felt like I had two younger brothers. And, you know, Jordan is our baby. He, you know, I was like his third mom. And, um, you know, as an older sister, I would pick up the slack for him. I would carry the load for him. I would pay his cell phone bill. I, I, when he was in the training center, I, I would send him money all the time. And then I finally stopped because I feel like he was paying for everybody. And um, so, you know, I, I just, we just cared, carried the weight for him because that's what you do as an old, oldest, older sibling yeah. in most cases, right? right yeah. Well, that's what Martha was. Martha was the older sister to Mary. And here in this story, it looks like she's like the younger sister, right? right. And she tattletales to Jesus and says, you know, Mary's not helping me. Tell her. Like, she couldn't even confront her own sister. Right. And that's not normal, right? In our family, we have no problem confronting. Like, I don't have, unless I, you know, I, you know, they're not listening, but we have no problem confronting. And so it just doesn't make sense as an older sister to go and tattletale on her younger sister to help her. When in a sense, she did this all the time. Martha was a woman that created hospitality for Jesus. Jesus would be traveling, ministering, and she would provide a place of rest and refuge, a place where Jesus could get fueled again and where he can have a good meal and he can have a good place to rest. So she was used to doing this. This wasn't new to her. You know, have you ever broken down and it was just a minimal task? Right. And um, I was at the DMV about a month ago, and I was just feeling a little bit discouraged. I, I, you know, just get wait in line, and it was deeper than that. But the clerk was so mean to me, and I waited, and, and I got to it, the, the place, and, I, and she goes, well, you got to do the eye test. I'm like, oh, man, I forgot my glasses. Do you mind if I run real fast to get my glasses? She's like, no, you got to wait in the line again. I was there already for two hours. I said, please, you don't understand. I am late to work. I got to go. And she's like, no, you no, know, you got to go. She was just so, it was like, okay, be mean, be rude. But she was like really, really mean. And tears just began to like get in my eyes. I'm like, why am I crying, you know? But I was like, I was discouraged. I, I, I just felt like, oh my God, that was over the edge for me. Like that was it. Like I had probably been feeling it for a few days, but her meanness right. brought tears to my eyes. And I'm like, you are so mean. And I then, then she gave me a, um, the, she's like, all right, well, you could just go to your car and, and, and you go to the appointment line. And I was like, thank you. And, uh, but you know, I was like, why am I crying? Like, this is nothing. But you know what I mean? When you have those breakdowns out of nowhere and it's like a minimal task, well, that's what began to happen to Martha. She was crying. Like, she began to have a breakdown because really what's in you is going to come out of you, right? And that's what began to happen. She was, but Martha was a good person. You know, a lot of times when people talk about her, they always say, be like Mary, sit at the feet. Martha was just bad and she was busy. <laughs> but really what Martha was is she was a resource. She was a leader. She was a woman that took ownership and she loved the ministry. Yeah. She loved her ministry. She loved serving Jesus and his disciples because she knew that, her, that she was making a difference. The more that Jesus felt rest, because Jesus was 100% human. So he got tired at times. He got hungry at times. So her ministry, she was able to lift him up so that he can go back and heal and talk about the salvation that he had to offer the people. So she was important, but something began to happen. And we read here in um, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11, it says, Be careful. Watch out for the attacks from Satan, your great enemy. He prowls around like a hungry, uh, like a hungry roaring lion, looking for some victim to tear apart. Stand firm, he attacks. Trust the Lord. 
heart and remember that other Christians all around the world are going through these things, sufferings too. Be careful. Watch out for the attacks from Satan, your great enemy. And here we begin to see that her passion began to get attacked. Here we see that something began to happen. And, you know, as, as, as people, you know, we, the greatest weapon that we have is our, our spiritual lives and the awareness, right? An, an awareness of what's going on. And a lot of times we're aware of the latest trends, fashions, whatever you might be into, cars, shoes, clothes, whether you're into investments, right? We're always staying aware. Even for those that like to watch the news, you like to be aware, right? When you put on the news early at 6 a.m. in the morning, you like to be aware of what's going on because you don't want to just go throughout your, I want to be aware. Well, that's what began to happen. Martha was not aware. She lost her awareness and the enemy began to attack her passion. You're important to the kingdom of God. You're important to him, the Lord, because you, your giftings edify the body and build up the church. You might think it's minimal, but it's important from whether you're an usher or kids game teacher. We build the kingdom of God. We make a difference. And the enemy wants us to think that we don't make a difference, that we don't make a difference, that we don't mean nothing, but we do. And you see that in Martha. She began to get discouraged. And discouragement means a lack of confidence. She began to have a lack of confidence in Jesus. You see, she had to begin to develop a distrust for the future in Luke 10. You know, what was really bothering her? She began to exchange the truth for the lie. You begin to see the enemy lie to her. And you also begin to see her feeling unappreciated. And no one cares. And the enemy loves to make us feel and throws those thoughts at us. No one cares. You know what? You're, you're doing too much. The enemy does not know what we think. But he knows how we respond, the way that we're carrying ourselves. He doesn't know what we think, but that's why the Bible talks about you got to take those thought captive. Yeah, and yeah. she began to see that in her life. She began to, you know, just start serving with such attitude. She began to serve with, with just like, uh, it, like she had to do it. Oh, wow. And she being like, well, she needs to help me. I'm doing too much. You see that come out of her. Yeah. But that wasn't the case. She could do it. She could do it. She was done it many times before. And it's crazy how when we're frustrated and we begin to feel discouraged, it shrinks our capacity. Yeah. Once we thought we could do it, and now we're like, oh, I can't do it. And the enemy strikes us with fear. But we got to be aware of those things. What I love about Martha, what I love about this story is that, you know, she could have, in this moment, she could have just turned it around. She could have recognized the, that her passion was under attack. But she didn't. She didn't have her shield up. Her shield of faith. And when the, the enemy comes in like a, with firing darts, that's why it's so important to gird yourself in the morning. The shield of faith and, and the, the, that time, the, the, the shield would cover your whole body. And when the, when the enemy would attack, they would have these arrowy firing darts that it was meant to destroy you. Not just one little, any attack was meant to destroy you. And she didn't have her shield up. She could have made the adjustment. And you see here at 1 Samuel 30, Six, how David was in distress and he, the people were out to kill him. But you know what he did is he encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged him. He recognized the attack and he says, I could be the victim or I could turn this around and fight back. And that's what we need as people because, you know, if anything, the enemy wants us to be, you know, he's not scared that we're saved. He's scared, he's scared that when we're passionate and we're full of faith, that's when we become a threat to darkness. And David recognized the attack, and he instantly got in his word, and he just said, you know what? You know what? You could do this. And he let the Lord speak to him and give him that strength, and then he went back into battle. And you know what? Every day the enemy is looking throughout, looking to whom he may go after and attack. But I want you to know your awareness and your spiritual life is so important because you'll be able to recognize, like, you ain't going to get me. You know what's crazy? It's the enemy doesn't have any new schemes. No, he doesn't. If you read in the word, they're the same. They're the same. The way that he attacked Moses, the way that he attacked Abraham, the way that he attacked Esther. No, it is the same. So all you got to do is be aware. And when the enemy attacks, encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Get in the word and that attack will dissolve.
And that's what we need to be. So she was discouraged. Instead of fighting back and encouraging herself, she let it linger. The second thing that she faced was disappointments. A sadness called, caused by unfulfillment. It was a heavy emptiness. And you read here in John 11, it says, Now a man was sick, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Martha was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sister sent a message to him, Lord, the one you love is sick. And here it was. She began to face a, a, a real strong need. Her brother was sick. And she wanted Jesus to heal him, right? Because that's what we do. That's the beauty of serving Jesus is that we have a healer. We have a provider. When we're in trouble, we run to him. And that's what she did. She ran to him because Martha loved Jesus. Even though she was going through it, she wasn't a bad person. Right. You know, and so you see that she began to uh, uh, just feel like, I, I, I want my brother saved. So she sent a message to Jesus in, uh, across the Jordan. And the message didn't get to Jesus, right? But Jesus knows. Jesus knows everything that we're going through. Yeah. It's more for us. It's more for our faith, yeah. our trust in him. Yeah. And so Jesus did not heal Lazarus. He ended up dying. And that was such a disappointing feeling that she began to have. Proverbs 13, 12 said, A deferred hope makes the heart sick. Right. And she began to lose her hope. Wow. And, and a lot of times we... We're good, right? We're like, God's going to move for me. God's going to move for me. But the minute that he doesn't move for us, we start feeling like mad. Like, why? Why? But you know what? She began to lose her trust in the Lord. She began to lose her, her faith in him because God's ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. And sometimes we think this low. And we're like, okay, God, move this way. But God's saying, I got more for you. I got a miracle working for you. Your ways are not my ways. My ways are so much better, and my ways are so much higher. But it's so hard to grasp when, when you're in it, when you're going through something, right? So hard to be like, Lord, I know your ways are better. But she began to feel the pain. She began to feel the pain of not getting what she wanted. And, you know, in this moment, Jesus was trying to break her. Today, we have a lot of, um, in, you know, in the men's home and the women's home and the deal. We, we call it, you're three five in it. If you're in the UTC, if you are from the UTC, you know what 3 5 it means. Leaning on your own understanding. And I, you know, you, you got nicknames in the tracer. Oh, she's just 3 5 in it again. There's Sister 3 5. And you can see that Martha was 3 5 in it. Leaning on her own understanding. Not acknowledging the Lord. But God was trying to break her. Because God is more concerned about our brokenness than our happiness. He will use situations. He will use, maybe you're, I want that job, and God doesn't open that job, and God wants to break you. I remember when I moved to San Diego, I'm very, I like structure in my day. I'm very structured. But the Lord did not open a, job, a door for me to work for a couple years, and I was like, what is going on? Yes, he provided, but God was trying to break me of my will, of what I want. He wanted me to say, no, you say, Lord, have control. You say, Lord, I give you my heart. But when I don't move the way you, I want to break you. I want to break you. And in Psalm 51, 16 through 19, the message version, I love this. It says, going through the motions doesn't please you. A flawless performance is nothing to you. I've learned God worship when my pride has been shattered. Heart shattered, oh lives ready for love. And you, you know what he's saying? David's saying is, you know, it doesn't, God will use anything to break us yeah. when we're not catching it and we're getting off aligned. And you could see that Martha, instead of being honest and transparent to Jesus and saying, okay, God, I can't do it on my own. Okay, I can't do it. On, I'm ready for your ways. Teach me whatever you're teaching. Because there's always purpose in pain. There's always power and pain. The Lord always wants to do something great in us. Because that's the only way we can run. We'll run to him on our knees, right? When everything's going good, we'll be like, we get a little bit like dignified. I got this under control. But the Lord will use situations in our life to bring us to our knees. Because sometimes we're self-reliant. And we, we, we don't think we need yeah. that extra grace. Oh, that she needs that, but I don't need that. Yeah. Oh, she needs that, but not me. Oh, he needs that. Oh, but not me. Oh, but when you're in it and you got to run to Jesus, 
It's that humility and that attitude of coming to Jesus and saying, Lord, I am nothing without you. I am nothing without you. But instead of getting that posture, she was like so hard. And you know what makes me and you soft? Because have you ever just woke up in the morning in your heart? You don't even know why. So, uh, man, like you just like your heart is stone. Like, but what, right? Because you're just like, I don't want to. I don't want to know how they're asking too much, right? You just start getting fleshed out. You wake up and you're in the flesh. So important to pray. But you know what makes us soft? You know what makes me soft? Is when I'm in prayer and I'm in the word, it makes me like clay. Like I'm moldable. I'm shapeable. But when we're not in prayer in the word, we become like that rock, like, dare you to move me. I ain't doing nothing. Right? Coming to church like, you know what? I'm, I, don't even talk to me. Like, you know, like I'm hard. I know that's pride. That's pride. And pride comes before a fall. And God was trying to break her pride. Because God's not pleased just with us coming to church. I showed up like I'm doing Jesus a favor. No, that ain't, Jesus don't care. He wants our brokenness. He wants our heart. And she wasn't catching it. She wasn't catching it. So because she could have dissolved this in the first tack, she could have did something. She could have reacted and got into her words. She let it linger. And it got bigger and it got bigger and it got bigger. Because Jesus doesn't always want us to be going through it. Do you think that, yes, my children are going through it again. You think he's in heaven rejoicing? No. The reason why the attacks and, and it gets bigger is because we don't learn the first time. Gee, some of us have to go around and around like the children of Israel would have taken them seven days. Seven days. Took them 40 years. Doesn't that describe us well? Sometimes we don't learn the first time. We have to go around and around and face enemy after enemy. Jesus like, that's your choice. That's your choice. We, we, we have to ask. God has to uh, move in different ways because we have to force him to move in different ways because he's like, I never intended to do that in your life. But because you went around, we didn't listen. Now he has to cause a miracle to get us out. And you see that she didn't break. She wasn't allowing the spirit to break her. You know, the, 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 you see here in John 11, and you see the story of, of how, you know, her brother died. And, and Martha was, was, you know, upset and discouraged. Jesus came to Bethany, and he, he, she ran out to Jesus, and she said, if you were here, my brother would have been gotten healed. Where were you? Where were you at? And sometimes we ask the Lord, where are you? And Jesus looked at her, you know, and he said, I am the life and the resurrection. Yeah. I am life. You've lost your life. You've lost your, that, that spirit about you that makes you so uh, attractive. When people ask you, why do you got that joy, huh? What, there's something different about you. Martha began to lose that. And that's why he addresses her. Martha believed for Lazarus' death, uh, resurrection at the end of the age. He, she didn't believe for the now. And he begins to address that. So she tells him that. And she's like, I believe. But with this, like, belief where it's like, oh, it's not real. It was like, I believe. But it wasn't, you know, we could do lip service to the Lord, right? We could say it with our, but deep down in our heart, she didn't trust the Lord. She didn't trust that his plan was greater in this moment. She was indifferent from the plan. So she tells she's, I, I believe. And then she runs back to the house to get Mary. And Mary is just that sister, you know, just a little bit more emotional. It's crying and weeping. And, and she goes, Jesus wants you. Go, go, go to Jesus. So Martha runs out and she copies her sister, right? Because Martha's the older sister. So Mary, Mary says the same thing. If you would have been here, Lazarus would have been healed. And he's just like, you're missing it. Because a few days later, the resurrection would have happened. And he was leading them to the cross. He was leading, you got to see the bigger picture. This isn't about just you. It's bigger than you. I'm going to use this to, to be able for you to witness my miraculous resurrection healing. But they didn't get it. So he tells them, go take me to the tomb where Lazarus at. Take me to that place where something died. Take me to that place where you lost it, where it was pure and it was genuine. Take me to that place. I want to go there where you're honest and true, where you're a son and a daughter before me. A lot of times, you know, we grow up, we're in, 
we learn church lingo, uh-huh. especially in Victory Outreach. We're servants and we're soldiers. And we keep going and we keep going. And we don't let the Lord do that work in us. And that's what began to happen. So they go to the tomb. And, and here Jesus was. It's like still Martha didn't ca- catch it. She didn't catch that I'm life and I'm the resurrection. So she tell, they, Jesus tells uh, Martha and Mary, you know, take me to that place. Then they go to the tomb and he says, open the tomb. But Martha, again, she just didn't get it. You know, sometimes our mouth gets us in trouble. And she tells Jesus, why do you want to open the tomb? He's already, his body's already rotting. He, there's, it smells. There's a stench there. And sometimes that the, 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 the bitterness and, and the, the, the just not belief, it begins to smell. Yeah. It begins to smell. And you, sometimes we think that we, we, oh, we don't smell. You know, oh, we can't tell. You know, like, but when you're bitter and there's no faith in you, you begin to smell. People smell it. I don't want to be around her. No, no, I don't want to be around him. They don't have the right spirit. No, I don't. I don't. don't ask her. Have you, you know, you might, hopefully that's none of us here. But maybe they're like, oh, maybe you can ask sister so-and-so to help. Or maybe you can ask brother so-and-so to help. Oh, no. Don't ask them. They, they smell. They smell with lack of generosity. They smell with bitterness. They smell with this self-righteousness. Don't ask them for nothing. They smell. They got a stench. Oh, that might not be you, but religious people, they smell. You walk into the room, oh, but when you have that broken and contrite spirit, it's an aroma. It's an aroma of, of, of just surrenderness and generosity and faith. It matters. You might think it doesn't matter. I've been there at times where I wonder why my, my, my leaders, my pastor, are not asking me for nothing. And Lord, you smell. You smell. You don't have generosity all over you. You don't have a willingness all over you. You, you, you think no one knows? Oh, no, people know. People know when you're in it and your heart is right before the Lord. It matters. It matters. Your condition, your spirit, our spirit is our number one ministry. Keeping it broken, keeping it willing, staying before the Lord like clay. Being moldable and shapeable. There are times in my life where I wasn't moldable and I thought I had it together. But the more that I broke, I felt the molding of God and the molding of my leaders molding me, shaping me, maturing me. So the moments that are to come ahead that I was ready for. And so they t- so Jesus said, you know what, Martha? Open this tomb. Open it. He was like, you just get out of the way, woman. And he got her out, opened the tomb. And with the roar and with power, he says, Lazarus, come forth. And then he said, take off those, 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 those strings that are on him. Unbind him. Unloosen him. And you know who was saying that he was bound? He had been tied up because in that time, the custom was to wrap them up, their mouth, their hands, their feet. But you know what he was saying? I, not only do I want to heal, I want to release a power and an anointing on Lazarus' life. And you, you might be here this morning and you might ask yourself, you know, you know, we're coming and the last days, what does it say? That people be lovers of themselves. That they will have a form of godliness but deny his power. And we're coming to such a critical point in our ministry. We got to stay cutting edge. We got to stay close to the heart of Jesus. We got to stay close to the heart of the vision and the need. And he called that place and he, he called it out. I don't know where you're at. I don't know how you could relate. But you know, you might have a promise that has died. I think, I personally think that Martha wanted to get married. I think she began to, to, to say, you know, I, I, I'm doing all this for Jesus, but the promises are not real for my life. You know, that they died. Something died in her. When Lazarus died, something died in her. And she didn't want to stay there in that comfort of pain. Sometimes Jesus wants to do a miracle in us, but we want to stay in our pain because it makes us a victim. It makes us a victim to, to stay like, oh, feel sorry for me. Feel sorry to me. I don't do that anymore because I've been through so much. I'm not minimizing what you've been through, but I want to begin to introduce you to who Jesus wants to be in your life. And something died. A promise died. Ministry died. Her calling died. Her love for souls died. Her love for the gospel died. 
She loved the gospel. She did. She worked endlessly to create an atmosphere for Jesus. Some people, she might have not been on the streets, but she was preparing an atmosphere for our king. How pure that was. And Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus because of it. The bond between them was special. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you've been facing. But maybe a promise has died. Maybe, maybe you've, you've been hurt. Maybe you've gone through some heartache. You know, maybe you've been disappointed because we work with people. Yes. You know, when people were saying, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm called to, victory outreach is unique. It's yeah. very unique because we're all called to people. Mm-hmm. We're all called to revive and restore people's lives. Yes. And, and I want to challenge you as the musicians come. I want to challenge you this morning. You know, we have, it has to be real. Yes. It has to be personal here. Your times in my walk with the Lord I looked good on the outside, but it wasn't real here. I looked good. I looked the part. I did what I had to do. I showed up so I didn't get in trouble or questioned. But, but I, Jesus said, what comes out, what's in you will come out of you. And you see that in Martha's life. You see that, that her, her, she lost it and it began to flow out of her everywhere she went. She couldn't believe for her own life. And sometimes it's like a covenant. You know, the Lord showed me this morning, even during worship, Jen, it's like a covenant, a covenant between me and you. You know, I'm, as you do for me, serve my people, build up my people. I've given you personal promises that I'm going to bring to pass. And sometimes we're like, oh, no, it's, you know, we believe for everybody else. You know, we believe for everybody else. Oh, yeah, we, we can say the right words, right, when... um someone's going through it and you're just like oh God's gonna come through for you he's gonna be faithful to you but inside it's not real it becomes dead because you don't believe it when you don't believe what you're saying it's dead works before the Lord you can't minister and just say oh yeah I'm just gonna minister no there is power when you believe what you're saying because you believe for your own life I feel a responsibility I feel a responsibility to be genuine to make this real making sure that the vision is real in my life making sure that the promises are real in my life because that's what brings power have you ever talked to someone that that you're like ah I don't I don't believe it no no but then when you talk to someone that you're like that girl that guy they believe it they are, they are overwhelming with this presence and this, this passion and this, this boldness because it comes from within. It's not cliche words. It's not something we just say because we know what to say. It comes from within. That's what purifies. That's what the anointing is. It's pure. And, you know, you got to ask yourself. You know, I, I begin to think of my promises for my brothers. I begin to think of my promises for the future. I begin to think of my promise like he's he's such a loving God. When when Martha was going through all this, Jesus could have rebuked her. And he she could have said, you know what, woman, you're get out of the way. You're no, but you see the father in this story. You see the father calling her. Martha, get back to the basics. Martha, I got a personal promise for you. Yeah, I know that you want to get married. I know you want your brother healed. I'm going to do it. But I'm calling forth resurrection faith. And as we stand, you know, I wanted to make time for the altar call. Because I know God wanted to do something. This is, this is our leader service. This is where God is, is, is going to pour out a spirit. Even I feel like this year is ours. This year, we're going to see the greatest revival. We're going to see the greatest awakening. We're going to see an outpouring of salvation, of healing, of miracles. And you know where it's going to start? Some of you are like, oh, it's going to happen. No. It's going to start with your belief. Your faith is going to release miracles, signs, and wonders. Why not you? Why not you? Why not you?
You got to tap in this morning. You might be weary, tired. You got to take Jesus to that dead place. Maybe you're okay in ministry, but you're there. The promises that have died for your family, salvation, for your healing, for your future. But today, but today, God is going to resurrect that. Today, God is going to resurrect that. And if you're here, I only want you to come if you're going to believe. If you're going to believe. And as this song plays, I want you to begin to speak life into your situation. I want you to resurrect. 